Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Praise God, God loves you. It's a joy to greet you all once again in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. God has things in your future better than you imagine. You may not understand right now. You need patience with God. He is going to take you to a better place, more rewarded, more fulfilled, draw near to God. When you get closer to God and do what God says and love people who hurt you, forgive them and keep praying for them, then you feel peace in your heart, contentment and satisfaction. At the same time, you will be blessed supernaturally. Our subject today is Train Yourself in the School of Darkness. We all go through times when we feel God seemed far away, like He is not listening to us. It feels like prayers are unheard and all our expectations are unfulfilling. Why do even those who are seeking God the most to seasoned disciples experience feelings of spiritual desertion and spiritual abandonment? Many people experience feelings like this, especially when it feels like you are not in control over anything in your life and the world around you. It is when you are consumed by all the uncertainties of life, faith is needed the most at that time. It's definitely easier to have faith when everything is going well. How about the times when we go through harsh realities of our life? Like a four-year-old girl suddenly lost from the parents in a crowded mall, you feel separated alone, you feel you are forgotten, you are abandoned. What do you do when you face such cruel realities? In Psalms 42.9 and Psalms 43.2, we read the psalmist fears, God has forgotten him. He is asking, why do I go on mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? The psalmist pain is sharp and he feels forsaken and he wants to know why. We all go through such situations. Why God? Why God I am going through this problem? Why enemies are always attacking us? We ask, why? Where is your hand? Why you are not rescuing us? Hallelujah. At such time, how do we respond? Our faith can grow cold at such situations and when we replace our radical call of salvation and discipleship with a religious Christianity. Don't leave as a religious Christian. You have to live as a spiritual Christian. What's the difference? A spiritual Christian will grow in righteousness. But a religious Christian will grow only in outward activities, religious stuff. So when you grow as a righteous person, not as a religious person, but as a spiritual Christian, what happens? Peace will grow. Peace will grow in you and you will never go called in your faith. Hallelujah. Every joy and trial come from above. Though the pain seems often so strong, God is ruler yet. We serve a God who redeems suffering to bring salvation to broken hearted. Dealing with broken heart can feel often as if there is nothing that can fix it. Enduring a broken heart can make you feel alone as if there is no one with you, no one understand your pain. You will be wondering where to go, what to do. So such time you will be in yourself. But God says you have to seek help and Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is closer to the broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Suffering comes from nowhere. You know that. All on a sudden, suffering comes. So how do we face such sufferings? For those who are in Christ, suffering should help them to lean on God. How patience to grow in character. Romans 5, 3 and 4. In Genesis 50, 20 we read, Joseph telling to his brothers, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. It was the jealousy that caused the Joseph brothers treat Joseph so cruelly, but God turned the most heinous crime into Joseph's 
blessing you will be knowing that story i am not going to explain this is a picture of wonderful way that god takes the most painful and difficult circumstances in the life of those who trust him fear him obey him hmm? if such people are going through the painful situations you should go home and read genesis 50th chapter about joseph hmm? he went through much painful situations eh but god has rescued him all hmm? because he trusted god he lived a good life pleasing unto god so if we also do the same we will have real victory wonderful life wonderful deliverance in our life one day but we have to patiently wait hallelujah god may not give us immediate remedy for our pain but he does care our pain what we are going through he cares he knows every pain he knows as psalms 147:3 says he heals our broken heart and binds our wounds so what we need to do when god seems silent the first step is work through your emotions be honest with him god wants us to tell him how we feel at such time whatever you are feeling being rejected angry hurt grieved cheated express those emotions and feelings to god you may think god knows your feelings anyway why to voice them out to god but prayer is never about giving god a new information it's about inviting god into your problem unless you voice out your problem god will not look at your problem you should understand psalms 50 15 God says to us call upon me in the days of trouble I will deliver you and you shall glorify me God is telling call upon me in the days of trouble so never think that anyway God knows our trouble God knows our pain why I should tell him anyway God knows what I am going through but God is telling call upon me in your days of trouble I will rescue you that means If you don't call upon God at the time of our pain we don't get God's help not this point hallelujah a good relationship with God is what sustains us through suffering how we handle our suffering says a lot about what we believe about God how we believe God so we want always the mountain top experiences but we are not ready to and willing to walk through the wilderness and valleys isn't it life is all mixed sometimes we will have mountain top experiences but again there will be some valleys waiting for us and wilderness we should know how the life is as we have come to jesus christ jesus is teaching us how this life is we were in ignorance and we were in darkness we never knew what is this life god is teaching us face your realities we cannot close our eyes to the reality realities are realities isn't it realities are realities all on a sudden we should not be down we should know we should prepare our mind eh, for painful situations so god does in hurt us one thing you should understand god does in hurt anyone god does in hurt anyone god does in hurt anyone but who will hurt us people will hurt us today also you are carrying hurt is it god hurt you no never your hurt is from people isn't it that truth you should understand hallelujah so god does in hurt us God redeems our suffering giving us grace to endure and grow in Christ character. You should call upon God at that time. Then only you will get strength. If you don't call upon God in your pains, still you will be in valley, the depth of the valleys you will be. Hallelujah. There are times or seasons God may seem silent in all of our lives. One possibility is due to our own disobedience. because we are choosing to walk in our own ways not in his ways you should realize the stages 
and you should recognize and repent from your sins as James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, He will draw near to you. That means, if you are not drawing near to God, He will not draw near to you. If you are going away from God, God will also go away from you. Hallelujah. But what about times when we are already seeking God? If you are a real disciple, you are really seeking God, you want to reach heaven, you are doing your ministry, eh? you are really going through such time, you are not in disobedience, even if something calls, immediately you will get up, you ask forgiveness, you keep walking. But for such people also, you can see God will be silent. Hmm? The reason for God's silence at such time is due to a time of testing. Even if we suffer doing good, we should endure them in righteousness, First Peter 4, 12 through 15. Even Jesus faced such test on the night of his arrest. He prayed to God, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away. Nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. Isn't it? Jesus went through such an agony. He wanted to go to the cross. Just see, you are being in a cross. Nails are pierced all over your body. What a pain you have to go through. Jesus Christ knew that harsh reality he has to go through. Eh? So often he went and prayed, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass away. I can't go through this pain, but let your will be done. Dear friends, understand, many unexpected pains we have to go through in our life. Many things. We don't want to go through such pains. But we should only pray like Jesus Christ. If it is possible, let me not go through this pain. I can't tolerate God. But if you want me to go through, let me. Let me. I told you, without God allows, nothing happens to us. Yes, people may be hurting us. It is for people Jesus went on the cross, isn't it? God has created people in his own image and his own holiness. Why Jesus had to go through the suffering? Because of people. People started sinning. God wanted to rescue the people to holiness. So Jesus had to be crucified. If people could have lived from the beginning a holy life, Jesus never could have gone to cross, isn't it? So that's the reason I told God doesn't hurt us. People hurt us. Because of people, we have to go through pains. You think about your pain. So, if it is allowed for us, we should only pray, Lord, this pain is terrible. Terrible for me, maybe. Your family atmosphere, your own husband or children, or in the church, in the ministry. You may be going through harsh realities, cruel realities. Cross was a cruel reality for Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? The same way we have to go through. That's the reason Jesus Christ told in your distress, Call unto me, I will answer you. Never go away from God. That is the time our faith grow cold. Grow cold, not go cold. Grow cold. We go away from God. We may think, why God has forsaken me? Why God is not seeing my pain? Is there any God? Never ask. He is there. He is watching your pain. God wants to rescue you. Come closer to God at that time. Cry out to God. If you cry out to God only, you get strength to go through that phase. If you keep quiet, you don't get strength. You will become weaker and weaker. Not only you will become weaker and weaker, you will grow cold and you will go away from God. Understand, my dear friends, hallelujah. In such times of testing and struggles, our goal is to faithfully endure our suffering without grumbling and disputing. Remember this. We are engaged to suffer our troubles as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Second Timothy 2.3 That is, keep doing righteousness. Keep doing righteousness. 
keep maintaining your peace and joy it's very difficult isn't it what is going on when you are in pain what is going on that means why is that war there is no peace there is no peace it is very difficult to find peace peace is not coming even if we maintain peace war is there as war is there pain keeps coming that time don't sleep my dear friends this is the time to pray a lot lord give me strength and if you have to forgive people if people have hurt you what jesus christ told bless those who hurt you and pray for those who hurt you hmm? you should pray what you should pray yes they are doing wrong to you lord let them repent let them understand what they are doing let them repent you should pray that is the time the more pain comes the more agony comes the more memory comes you should pray more but what the believers do the more memory and more pain comes anger will increase you will not pray don't do that please that is the time to pray for those who hurt you pray for those who hurt you you are in pain because somebody has hurt you isn't it pray pray lord let them understand what they are doing is wrong this is what god said if you don't pray god cannot take care of that person if you keep quiet god cannot take care of that person he will grow in his crime cruel crime so your prayer is most important please understand hallelujah that's the reason we should be like soldiers in war but believers are like when war comes they will be sleepy you can just imagine if soldiers are not strong and keep fighting in the war what can happen in the same way things can happen in your life when you go through problems if you don't pray and if you go away from god and cry and sit there please understand you need lot of prayers at that time hallelujah david we should pray like david david was a man after god's own heart for samuel 13 14 he responded to his pain by calling out to god this is how you have to pray oh lord i call my rock be not deaf to me lest if you be silent to me i become like those who go down to pit write down all these prayer points lord you have to answer me i can't go through this pain enemies are hurting me please if you continue like this if you allow the enemies to only attack me attack me i will go to the pit lord help me please write down these prayer points and pray if your enemies attacking you and hurting you stop them lord stop my enemies hurting me please i have become a person like who is going to pit david is telling Hmm? Hallelujah. We read in Psalms 28:1. At the end, God heard David's prayer, and he has written in Psalms 28:6 and 7. Blessed be the Lord, for He has heard my voice of my plea for mercy. He is my strength and shield. He cried like that. Eh? God rescued him. Psalms. 28 first he is praying and 6 and 7th verses he has written god heard my prayers he rescued me if anybody is attacking church it is church people's duty to pray like this lord people are attacking church church is wounded you should pray everybody should get up and pray it is not that one person is praying or to our praying lord let them repent eh see when he prayed he got the answer but why many of us are not getting the answer we are not praying with that agony we think anyway god knows our problem or you may be in anger that you may be thinking why i have to go through this much of problems i have left everything i have followed jesus christ still i have to go through this Many questions will arise at that time. 
you should understand everybody has to go through even if you are going through the right things if you are really walking through god's way you have to go through the pain but you should know how to handle that pain hallelujah when we choose not to turn to god in our trials and pain we magnify our pain our pain and peacelessness will increase you know that that is what is happening to you we can be angry at god and people and harden our hearts so don't store your negative emotions as and when pain accumulate in your heart pray and leave them to god keep praying till you get peace till you get peace in your heart if you are not getting peace keep praying keep praying and capture all your wrong negative thoughts and bring the thoughts like god's promises you will get all wrong negative thoughts nothing going to happen nothing good is going to happen i am a failure nothing good will happen from beginning i have this kind of life only i came to christ till i have tragedy i may have to go through many tragedies don't say all such things every promises that is the time you have to meditate he will never leave me i will come out from this i will be a successful person i will not be the tail i will be the head all the promises if you are sick i will be healed the bible says we will not get any sickness as your soul prosper you will be prosperous in everything and in good health meditate i will have always good health till i die i will not go to hospital all these things you should be chanting you should be telling hmm? worship god it's very important at that time otherwise you will go to the pit in those seasons of life we should also lean on to our spiritual family godly brothers and sisters hebrews 10 24 and 25 we need encouragement from others from spiritual family otherwise sin will harden spiritually who can help many others maybe your friends or anybody help you but spiritually who can help you spiritual brothers and sisters otherwise sin will harden your heart hebrews 3:13 as children of god we need each other's help in the body of christ to live peacefully you should understand every day in our suffering when we feel lonely we need our spiritual family support encouragement guidance care and we are asked to speak the truth in love we will all grow it's written speaking the truth in love speaking the truth eh? always we need to hear the truth in good times we will come and hear the truth but in bad times we withdraw from the church withdraw from everyone and we don't want to hear the truth eh when you are in the pit you need to hear the truth when you are in the pit there should be somebody to lift you up spiritually spiritually means you will be filled with all anger unforgiveness sadness negativity eh to lift you up to the righteousness you need spiritual family and first corinthians 12 21 teaches us we need each other's help this verse says like our own human physical body i cannot say to the hand i have no need of you nor again head to the feet i have no need of you this is the relationship in church we are all connected church is christ's body that means each one of us are each part if i am hand you may be leg or the other person may be i ear like that we are and we should be connected please understand so especially when you go through a problem many of you will go away from the spiritual family it's a mistake and a blunder you are doing that is the time you should come closer to the spiritual family those who are growing in christ you should get connected to please understand otherwise you will sin and you will be in your negativity and your case will be worse so we need the help of each other strong brothers and sisters in distress if you treat physical sickness with the inappropriate medication not only will sickness continue but your sickness will be worse isn't it you need pro- per medication if you are sick you should go to the proper hospital and the proper doctor hmm? if you don't get diagnosed correctly 
from an expert doctor and the right medicines eh, what will happen your case will be worst your healing may proceed prolong hmm, and your case will be worst in the same way please understand if you don't get the right treatment in your painful situation nobody is exempted from this pain in life understand you and me life long we have to go through pains like this don't run away from church church is the place you get the real medication for your pain from where you get you can go to mental hospital what they can give you hmm? you tell me they cannot give you any mental medicine for some time that may help you but still you will be thinking wrong thinking control tablets are also there so many things are there that you have to life long you have to take side effect will be there still hmm? you tell me church is god's hospital please understand that is the reason right hospital you should go i am not praising i am not exalting christ way church but what is christ way church i have to say isn't it so some people may say something don't believe them satan is using their mouth that's all the right church you should go the right hospital you should go right doctor you have to see the right pastor you have to see right other associates will be there nurses compounders eh experienced people please understand so just like if you don't get the right treatment for your sickness your sickness will be worse it will worsen the same way your pain in life will be worse day by day if you don't get the real spiritual treatment from the church hallelujah so it is not only jesus christ has told us that we have to go through many struggles he has warned us he has told us he has told us in this world you have many troubles and paul also told through many struggles we have to enter the kingdom of god all these warnings are there in the bible not only we are warned jesus christ told i will give you peace i will give you my rest come to me he has promised peace also hmm? please understand he has warned about our troubles so don't ignore troubles troubles will come at the same time he has promised us peace you should get peace hallelujah so god has got his own way to get peace don't go in your own way it is important to understand that every human being undergoes seasons of their life they are filled with sorrows and sadness attempting to ignore their pain in darkness and rejection and loneliness would only lead to deeper and darker and deeper denial of your internal stage your internal pain will increase never stuff them inside and be lonely depend upon god's family that's why you are coming to church that's why god has given you an another family that is called spiritual family church please understand you need spiritual support the world misleads us and tells us to follow your heart isn't it world will tell what your heart say do this foolishness never do your heart will tell many things your heart will tell at that time many things like that many heard and they have fallen in the pit please understand in your misery when you go through pain your heart will tell you many things and world will tell follow your heart what bible says don't lean on your understanding acknowledge god in his ways proverb 3 5 and 6 eh when you go through a pain you have a leader come and meet the leader people will not come to the pastor they underestimate a pastor when you go through such time when you are hearing something come and say pastor i am hearing like this is it true eh don't lean on your understanding 
Hallelujah. So, we are instructed throughout the Bible not to ignore the personal hardship as something bad. It is testing of our faith to produce patience to character. Isn't it? Testing of our faith. We go through. When you are in different kinds of troubles, rejoice. Bible is telling, rejoice. Can we rejoice? No. When you can't rejoice, what happens? Pain is there in your heart. Go and consult a spiritual doctor. After Jesus Christ, yes, you should pray to God. You should lean on God. Still pain is not coming. There is somebody to help you. His name is called the pastor. You should come and consult, Pastor, this pain is not going. I prayed a lot. I don't know what's wrong with me. Hmm? Who will come and consult? You will go in your own understanding. And you will tell God, sir, at that time many things you will hear. If you are not in God's way, if you are in God's way, what you will do? Patience to produce character. That is the time you are in right way. That time what happens? You get peace. You don't get fear. You don't get fear. Yes, all these things will come. They will be under control. Fear will not overtake you. Peacelessness will not overtake you. When you are in God's way, peace will overtake your pain. Then you can understand. That time you will hear from God. If peace is not in your heart, whatever you are hearing, please understand those who are flowing in gift. You not only hear from God, you hear from Satan. Not everything that you hear is from God. Don't say God said, God said, God said. If God says, He says the right thing. God will never say, go away from righteousness. Will He? No. Come closer to righteousness. Forgive the people. Have patience. Love the people. This is what God says, isn't it? So when we go through the right ways, we get peace. So if you are not getting peace, understand still war is going on. Bible is telling rejoice when you have different kinds of troubles. Testing of your faith produce patience. Patience produce character. Character. When character start producing, we get peace. Please understand my dear friends. Hallelujah. Not only God is changing us through our trials, as we trust God and do what He says, He enters into our struggles and pains and sympathizes with us and helps us to have victory in where we are suffering. We read in James 4, 8, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. In order to obtain God's mercy and favor, we should draw near to God. What God says? Draw near to God and cleanse your heart. Purify your hands, you double-minded. Why? Double-minded. It's written. If you are not cleansing your heart, if you are not purifying your heart, you are in double mind. So, so many things you will hear. Single-minded person will hear from God. Double-minded person will hear from the devil also. Two. Two minds. You will hear from God also. Hear from Satan also. Because you have two minds. Hmm? If you have real pure mind, you will only hear from God. Hallelujah. In order to obtain God's mercy and favor, we should draw near to God, cleansing our heart, purifying our heart. It is necessary to recognize our sins and draw near to God. To have more of purity in our heart, what will happen? Friends, that time we will have peace. If peace is not there, war is there. War is there, you should understand something is going wrong in your heart. Otherwise, if you don't do this, we are living with double-minded. If peace is not settling in your heart, you are still double-minded, divided between God and the world. That is being in God in worldly ways. Double-mindedness means you are in God, but in worldly ways. You say you are in God. You are born again, baptized. You are coming to church. You are doing every spiritual activities, but you are doing everything in worldly ways. Why? Peace is not there. Why fear? Please understand. That time you will hear many things. Please believers understand, especially 
इफ यू थिंक यू हैव सो मच पावरफुल गिफ्ट थ्रू दैट गिफ्ट your double mindedness will cheat you please understand you hear very strongly from satan single mindedness when single mindedness is there peace is there as i am going through struggle i don't have to worry about that i am going through fearful situations but god said fear not i will not fear i will do what is right peace will come single mindedness you hear from god double mindedness you hear from god as well as from satan so you will not understand which is from god and which is from satan and everything you will say god said god said god said god said say what you hear from satan also you will tell god is leading me god is leading me don't take god's name in vain please understand it's a commandment never take god's name in vain double minded people will take god's name in vain be very careful hallelujah James 1:7 and 8 state double minded man is unstable in all his ways he should not think that he will get anything from god you are in god but in worldly ways bible is telling you are unstable don't think that you will get anything from god because you are not staying in one place why you don't want to go through god's ways you cannot forgive that person you want to still keep the anger in your heart yes so much cruelty that person has done he should have not done that how can i forget or how can i forgive no that is only people will tell jesus told love your enemy if you are not able to fast and pray lord i am not able to forgive that person i am not able to deal with my anger please help me if you are not praying that prayer and if you don't want that anger to go away from you you are a double minded person if you are a gifted person you will hear from satan please understand Satan is there to destroy you. So many people Satan has destroyed. Why? You allow Satan to destroy. Satan or God will not touch us unless we allow. Please understand. If God also will lead us only if we allow. Please understand. God, I need you. I need you. We sang that song, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. Every moment I need you. Every second I need you. Okay? Eh? If you go to God through that prayer only God will be with you. please understand hallelujah so if you are double minded you will not get anything from god when peter was drowning in the sea peter feared the water beneath him and doubted the power of god isn't it at that moment he began to sing when he doubted the power of god he began to sing same thing will happen to us when we doubt the power of god we to start sinking in our problems but he looked down to god and called jesus help me that time jesus came and lifted him from the water don't doubt god's power trust him nothing is impossible with him the moment we start doubting god's power we start sinking please understand the moment we start doubting god's power our peace will go away war continues in our heart doubt continues pain continues fear continues uncertainties continues please understand eh? but when we depend and believe that power certainty faith peace everything will come my dear friends understand this is the life we are called to live please understand people are living with double mindedness that is being in god and living in the world most of the christians are living with double mindedness bible is telling they are unstable in their ways and god has given so great gift to many people they are cheating god they are being profitable servants to the kingdom of satan please understand they are there to expand satan's kingdom and telling all rubbish things and tell god said god said you can only understand god cannot say that it is so clear those who are growing in righteousness they can understand that that is so clear it is not god please understand why people hear from satan hallelujah when evil and distressing situations happen and frustrate us 
we have number of choices we can wallow in our miseries sing in our sorrows murmur dispute against god for our misfortune believers never sit there you will be led by satan come closer to god come closer to your spiritual family never go away from spiritual family understand what i am talking hallelujah you can withdraw from god and keep destroying yourself this is what you do or you can draw near to god and purify your heart you can trust the promises of god knowing that no matter what happens god will bring good out of evil he will bring joy out of sorrow and he will cleanse your heart and purify your heart and your double mindedness will be single mindedness please understand doubtful people doubtful people are double minded people be careful with your gift please understand hallelujah and i say 14 9 15 and 16 god is asking you can a woman forget a nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb eh? he is asking can a woman forget a nursing child that she should have no compassion she should have no compassion on the child that she has given birth no mother will do he is asking no mother will do then you think i will do draw near to god cleanse your heart cleanse that is very important then only you can draw near to god if you don't draw near to god you are living in double mindedness hallelujah even this may forget yet i will not forget you i have engraved you on the palms of my hands please understand this is god so dear one don't believe the lie that god has abandoned you in your troubles and pain god has not forgotten you troubles and pains are inevitable in our life accept it the depth of the pain we don't know sometimes it will be so much that's why come we have a family we will share together don't think that you have nobody to share those who are being alone you have to share alone and you will go away please understand that is the time you have to get closer to your spiritual family and get closer to god grow in righteousness and peace second peter 1 2 says peace increases by the knowledge of god eh how does peace increase by the knowledge of god not by asking god fill me with peace by the knowledge of god you should know how god is acting how god is available for you god is omnipotent and omnipresent he is there everywhere he say good god even if our own mother who has given us birth for say he is not a god who will forsake us please understand so as the knowledge increase peace will increase hmm? hallelujah don't trust your feelings never ever trust your feelings trust god through his words for those who are in christ jesus christ no matter how difficult the circumstances are in life no one or no situation could steal your eternal salvation the joy of your eternal salvation not only god loves you but he has a purpose for you a purpose that you need to complete what is that purpose your purification god doesn't want you to end up in hell last week we have learned hell is reality it is like every stage a child is born then childhood adolescence and youth then middle age old age there are stages last stage is what death eh those who are living in this world those who don't know after the death what will happen they will not work for their salvation work out your salvation with fear and trembling in every stage you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling romans 2:7 says god wants you to be patient in the trouble in well doing seek for glory honor and immortality only such people will reach heaven you need patience patience in your trouble don't be impatient and jump out of the fire like satrak meshak and apintaku be in the fire and praise god be in the fire and praise god don't be in the fire and murmur and grumble and dispute and come out please don't do that 
you need strength to be in the fire isn't it eh you have spiritual family to support you get closer to spiritual family see who will reach heaven by patience in well doing seek for glory honor and immortality otherwise dear friends understand now in what stage you are some of you are in in your adolescence some of you are in your youth some of you are in your middle age some of you are in your old age the truth is next stage is death death work out your salvation with fear and trembling don't end up in the hell so god allows this pain for what for our purification through all this pain that we go through we should be purified so that we will not end up in hell please understand oh this much fire god this much fire god i can't go through cry out to god he will give strength god might have allowed it god didn't stop it because you need that purification you don't know the purpose behind that you don't know one day you will die and if you don't go through god's way you will end up in hell you don't know you don't have any understanding but god knows god doesn't want you to eternally painful die there in the hell please understand you have only vision you can only understand up to your death you think after your death everything is finished you know things are starting the day you die you can feel yourself please understand you will recognize yourself either going to hell or going to paradise last week i explained to you your dead body may be there but you are not there people will come and cry around your dead body you are not there you are crying if you are not prepared for heaven if you are prepared for heaven you are going peacefully you will be thanking god jesus i love you jesus praise you jesus praise you for christ which is praise you for a new pastor because i am a pastor i am leading the people to heaven i know people can mock at me and tell so many things those who are hearing from satan those who are hearing from god they know what i am doing eh you will be praising dancing oh christ way members will be there i want to see lord eh so you will be dancing and going but if you are not what will happen you will be screaming ayyo why did i die why i have to go there some more time i could have lived in the earth i heard about hell but i never never believed what a painful stage lord forgive me forgive me you may be crying your time is over your time is over please understand my dear friend so there you will be screaming here with pain you will be screaming and you are not coming closer to god and you are thinking where is god why god is not coming to you because you are not going to god closer by purifying your heart you are not seeing god in your pain because you are not purifying your heart if you are purifying your heart and going you are peaceful hmm? you think this pain is too much then how about the pain in the hell my dear friends understand god doesn't want you to end up in hell please understand my dear friends this pain is nothing nothing purify purify give thanks lord i don't want to sin i don't want to keep any anger or anything to us other people help me please understand this is god's aim regarding those flames and troubles and pain that you feel that are consuming in your life they may be painful but trust god they are the test to refine you your pain that you are going through today are the test to refine you the worldly people have no idea about the pain that they are going through they will tell follow your heart so many things if you are drinking your friends will tell drink more da <laughs> you will forget everything eh duddilla sala sikthadalla nane kodtini ba malva pain to overcome pain they drink and booze one day you have to die somebody has come and told you gospel 
You ran away from gospel. Somebody has brought you to church. You ran away from church. When you reach hell, you will think, Ayyo, I could have listened to those people. I could have prepared myself. Can I go back? Can I prepare myself? All the thoughts will come at that time. You will message me. I will be up. And tell, Sister, I am very sorry. Call me anything. Sister, Edi, Podi. Edi, Podi, Avalu. Yen adhru kari, nanak yen illa. I am not waiting for a position or a name. I am God's humble shepherd to lead the sheep. I want to reach heaven. I want to take many sheep to heaven. That's all. I am not here for position or a name. Nothing. Call me anything. I have no problem. Please understand. So, your pain is a test. Your pain, you and me, are going through pain. It's a test. It's a purification to become like Jesus Christ. So that we think this pain is too much. So that we will not end up in that terrible pain. Get closer to God. Purifying heart. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close our eyes in prayers. Mm -hmm.